Ben Thompson. Now, with the news this morning that more than 50 countries are to be named by the government uh, later today, where holidaymakers from England won't have to quarantine when they arrive home from those countries, it is time now to put some of your questions to travel industry experts in your questions answered. And joining me now are two travel industry specialists, Wendy Haynes and Jill Starley Granger. Uh, good morning to both of you. We have got some quite specific, quite detailed questions. Uh, let's begin with one from Rachel for you, Jill. Um, we have our family of four package holiday, holiday booked to go to Corfu, August the 7th, returning on the 17th of August. The holiday is booked as non-refundable. Currently looking to see if I can transfer the whole holiday as an option. Uh, Rachel paid in full around £4,000, didn't get round to booking travel insurance. She's currently shielding and personally would like a refund as she's still too frightened to go. Her holiday was booked using her MasterCard. What are her options and rights? Okay, so legally you don't have any right to a refund at all, unfortunately. Um, we always, I always suggest that people take out travel insurance. And a year ago when I was saying this, loads of people were like, why take out travel insurance? Well, you can't predict what's going to happen in the future. But unfortunately, um, I guess you didn't take out travel insurance in time. And while it's really important to pay with a credit card or if you don't have a credit card, a debit card to give you extra protection, that protection only comes in if you have a dispute with the company that you are dealing with. Well, there's no legal dispute here because if the holiday is going ahead, but you are just choosing not to travel, that's called disinclination to travel. If you had travel insurance, you could get a note from your doctor to say that you're shielding and your travel insurance would then cover it. But because you don't have travel insurance, then, then it is now just disinclination to travel. So your only real option at this stage is to try to convince the travel agent to let you move the trip to a future date. I think that's the best bet. And a lot of travel agents are being very understanding about doing that. OK, um, well, that's good advice. Uh, Rachel, I hope that helps. Um, Wendy, you were nodding along with that piece of advice as well. A question for you from John, uh, who says, my wife and I uh, are in our 70s. We've been isolating since lockdown, but have flights booked to San Francisco on September the 3rd and do not wish to travel due to the coronavirus issues in the USA. But the flight is still scheduled to leave, he says. We cannot cancel the flights without losing all of our money. The flights and accommodation were booked via an, an agency and the holiday back balance is due in two weeks, which we do not want to pay. What can we do? Asks John. It's a tricky one. We've got a couple of options, really. We can either pay the balance and hope that the foreign office changes or stays as it is so that they can't travel, in which case then they'd be entitled to a refund or a credit note. Um, otherwise, they could speak to their airline and, and supplier and see if they could actually change. Um, Otherwise, they cannot pay their balance and lose their deposits. So that there's a couple of options, really. OK, but look at that foreign office advice very closely is, is number one. And number two, obviously, get in touch, I guess, with their airline, anyone else they've made a booking with, ASAP, to see if, if dates can be shifted. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as I say, if, if, if the foreign office advice is still that they can't travel, then they'll be entitled to um, a, a refund or a credit note, depending on the airline's actual terms. OK, it is a way off yet, September the 3rd, but uh, some good advice there for you, John. I hope that helps. Um, Jill, a question from Jane, who asks, I've paid a deposit on a 10-day holiday to St Lucia, departing on the 10th of September. Uh, the balance is now due, which we are being asked to pay. What do we do? So lots of people in this position, I guess, with balances to pay and unsure whether to actually go ahead and, and part with that money. So if you don't pay the remainder of the balance, then what you risk is losing everything. Um, so if you are 100% certain you do not want to travel then, the thing to do is to contact the travel agent and see if they'll move it to a different date. But again, just like previously, this would just be considered disinclination to travel. And when it comes to you pay a deposit and then the remainder is due later, um, if you default on the rest of the payment, it's almost like defaulting on any other financial arrangement and you effectively lose your right to everything. So if you think you might still want to travel, the best advice would be to go ahead and pay the rest of the deposit. And then if you can't travel because um, there's a quarantine issue 
or uh, the company cancels the trip, at least then you would get your money back in full. Whereas if you didn't pay, after paying the deposit, if you defaulted on the rest and then the company canceled, you still wouldn't be due anything back. So if you've paid a deposit, my advice is really to go ahead and pay the remainder unless you are 100% sure you don't want to travel and then either just see if the company will refund you and in most cases they aren't because it is disinclination to travel or see if they'll move the date maybe back a year where you might be more comfortable. Okay, um, a question from Andy for you, Wendy. Uh, his question is specific to Spain's entry rules that state a public health locator form has to be filled out for each passenger prior to arrival. Um, one of the questions on the form, Andy says, asks, have you been in contact with a person confirmed with COVID-19 during the last 14 days? So he says his wife is an NHS worker currently on a COVID-19 ward. So the answer to that question in her case will obviously be yes. She has also previously tested positive to the disease, confirmed through an antibody test. Their concern, Andy says, is that Spain's health officials could potentially turn them away at the airport because of her history and continuing involvement with COVID-19 positive patients. Do you think this is a possibility? And what will our options be as far as insurance is concerned if we're turned away? Really interesting question. Yeah, th these forms are new and lots of countries are asking for these forms to be filled in before you actually travel. Um, in this particular case with the Spain, when you fill the form in and then you're left with a, a QR code that you either show on your phone or you print out and take to the airport with you to, to allow you to travel. So I think by answering um, yes to that question, there's there's a likelihood that he won't get that QR code anyway, so he won't be allowed to travel. So in that case, he'd need to speak to his travel insurance to see if he's actually covered to, to claim off his insurance. Mm, very specific situation. I hope, uh, Andy, you're able to um, get all the answers you're looking for. Uh, Jill, we've seen a, a third day uh, in the USA of record numbers of infections. Graham asks, when can I go visit my family in the USA? Well, you're not the only one asking that question, Graham, because I need to go visit my family in the USA as well, and they're due to come over here. Um, and unfortunately, we just don't know. Um, we had plans this Christmas for uh, my family to come over and spend Christmas with us here, um, and it's looking increasingly unlikely. However, it, it's just it's, it's uh, seeing which way the wind blows on any given day, but hopefully within a couple of months they might be on the list, but that's pure speculation, unfortunately. I don't see it happening in the very near future. Mm. Uh, Wendy, Ron is asking, if I leave Scotland to holiday in Spain for a week and fly back into England for a couple of days, then return to Scotland, would I have to quarantine myself for 14 days, assuming the Scottish government hasn't followed the UK government's uh, regulations regarding travel abroad? In theory, yes. Um, although, who knows what the Scotland government are going to do now following the, um, the English announcements today. It may be that they change those because otherwise it's, it's quite a tricky situation, isn't it? Uh, OK, so look out for all the, the government announces, uh, announcements. Obviously, different positions with the various devolved nations makes things a bit more complicated at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, Jill, John asks, we have flights booked to New Zealand. Will we have to quarantine for 14 days when we get there? If we do, the trip wouldn't be worth it. So currently you cannot go to New Zealand for just leisure purposes. So that's that's out. If your flight is still operating and you are due to fly for leisure purposes, you're going to have to look to your travel insurance because you're only refunded for your flight if the airline cancels the flight. Now, people who are from New Zealand um, and for a few other reasons, key workers, et cetera, they can get exceptions. Um, so there are a few exceptions, but you wouldn't be able to go in the short term anyway. Um, if New Zealand does decide to lift these restrictions, one of the ways it might do it is to um, require you to go into a quarantine hotel. Because currently, even if you're a New Zealand citizen and you go into the country or if you're a key worker, you do have to quarantine for 14 days. And in most cases, if you're a foreigner and particularly if they open it to leisure travel, you will probably have to foot the bill for that hotel. Okay. So it's not great news. Um, so it depends on when the trip is. Yeah, it, it, the advice is pretty clear cut there at the moment, isn't it? Um, mm. Wendy Haynes and Jill Starley Granger, thank you so much uh, for all that advice this morning. Thanks as ever to you for sending in your questions. I hope some of those answers uh, were really useful for you. And uh, we will have much more, of course, on the changes to those quarantine regulations coming up throughout the morning and throughout the rest of the day here on BBC News.